Welcome to lesson two of modeling a Lambretta. In this lesson, we're going to apply the blueprints to planes in 3ds Max. I'm Di the IT Guy, and I'm here to show you how. Okay, this is the start of our work in 3ds Max. I'm never comfortable working with these grids. To switch them off, activate the viewport, then type G. To start, I'm going to create a plane. Click on the tool here. Now click in the top viewport and drag out a plane. Don't worry about the size. Move here to parameters. Enter a length and width of 500. And we only need one segment each way. OK. Zoom all viewports to their full extents. Make sure the top viewport is active. Type F3 and also F4 to switch on edges and shading. Now activate the perspective viewport. Hold down the Alt key then type W. This enlarges the viewport to full screen. Switch on the angle snap toggle. Select the rotation tool. Hold the shift key down then click and hold here. Drag like this to copy and rotate the plane through 90 degrees. Highlight, then rename as side. OK, I'll just select the first plane and rename it Plan. Reselect side. As before, hold down Shift, then click and drag. This time horizontally through 90 degrees. Rename this Front. Now select the Move tool. Hold down Shift. Then click and hold on the Y axis to drag out. Rename this Rear. OK. When the blueprints were produced, the plan and side views were made twice the size of front and rear. This should be reflected in the size of the planes here. Select Plan, then the Modify panel. Now change length and width to 1000. OK. Now select Side. Again change the length and width to 1000. Zoom Extents. If I hold the Alt key down and the middle mouse button, I can rotate the model and take a look at how I've done. I'm happy with that. OK. Our planes are all constructed. Let's get on with applying the blueprints. Select Plan. Type M to bring up the Material Editor. Use Material Slot number 1. Click here to apply Material to Selection. Rename the Material to Plan. Move down here to Maps. To the right of the Diffuse button, Click on None. In the Material Map Browser, double-click on Bitmap. Select Plan. You can see in the Material slot that the Bitmap has been applied, but in the Model Viewport there is only a grey plane. This is because this button, Show Map in Viewport, has to be selected. With this switched on, our Bitmap is now visible. Unfortunately, the orientation is wrong. To fix this, I'll use the Coordinates dialog. If I enter 270 here in the W value, this should give the correct orientation. That's it. I'll just rotate the jig to have a look. I'm happy with that. Let's move on. Now select Side. Type M. Choose Material Slot 2. Rename it Side. Apply, then click on Maps. Again, click on the None button. Choose Bitmap. Select Side. Open. Now take a look at it. Rotate it a little more. Straight away you can see that there's a problem. Type M to bring up the Material Editor again. I'll change the W value to 90. 
minimize the material editor. Now take another look at it. There's still a problem. The scooter is pointing the wrong way. Select the rotate tool. Rotate side through 180 degrees. Now take a look at it. That's fine. Time to move on. Now click the select by name tool. Choose front. Type M to bring up the material editor. Material slot 3. Apply to front. Click on maps. None. Select bitmap. Choose front. Show in viewport. I'll rotate the model to have a look. You can see that once again the bitmap needs to be rotated. So change the W coordinate to 90. OK. Again select by name. Rear. Now choose slot 4. Apply. Rename to Rear. Choose Maps. Pick None. Again Bitmap. Select Rear. Show in Viewport. You can see that again the bitmap has to be rotated. Change W to 90. There we go. I forgot to rename this one. So I'll quickly sort that out. I'm happy with that. The next job is to make some adjustments to the planes. I'll begin by selecting the side plane. Pick the Move tool. Now click and drag the plane upwards. I'm looking to line up the top edge of the thick baseline with the plan. Rotate the model around so I can see the front and rear planes. Select by name. Front. Click and drag the plane upwards. Again looking for the thick baseline. OK. I'm happy with that. So, for the last time, choose Select by Name. Choose Rear. Using the Move tool, click and drag the rear upwards and align the baseline. This next part sounds a bit strange. Using the Move tool, slide the rear plane to the front end of the jig. Now select the front plane and slide it to the rear. There we go. With that done, use Alt plus W to bring up the viewports. I need to do a small amount of tidying up with the front and rear planes. Use Alt plus W to enlarge the top viewport. Using the plan as a guide, I'm sliding the front plane tight to the back end of the scooter on plan. Now select rear. Slide this tight to the front end of the scooter on plan. Finally, select side. This needs to slide across so it's just touching the brake lever. Just there. So, Alt plus W again. And again to bring up the perspective viewport. Now, using select by name, choose front and rear. From the top right of the screen, choose display. Now scroll the panel up until you see Backface Cull. Make certain this is switched on. Now, holding down the Alt key and rotating the jig model using the middle mouse button, you can see that the planes become invisible when viewed from one side. What I'm looking for is to have both the front and rear views visible from inside the jig. The rear plane is fine. Select Front, choose the Rotate tool, rotate the plane through 180 degrees. Now, when I rotate the model around, you can only see the front and rear from inside the jig. A small but very useful piece of computer magic. And now the last job to be done here. With all the planes set up, I don't want to accidentally move any of them when I'm modelling. 
To do this, select all the planes, click the right mouse button, select object properties, make certain that show frozen in grey is not checked. That done, check freeze. Now no matter what I do, I can't select any of the planes. Well that's it for this tutorial, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you intend to do a lot of advanced modelling, knowing how to construct a 3D jig is an essential skill. If you found this tutorial useful, please give us a thumbs up. There are a lot more tutorials to come, so why not subscribe? Use the button below. Thanks for watching.